for a second If I could look in your eyes and just check in If I could reach someone I once knew I would say something to break through Corey, my friend, it is always great speaking with you. Uh, I know we're still a couple weeks from when it happened, but I'm still going to say to you, Happy New Year. And um, I've been, you know, we're friends. We follow each other. Um, You have been busy. I've seen you on different programs uh, online. Uh, You know, I've been seeing little, little bits and pieces of promotion of a new album, like, how are you keeping yourself so busy when the world seems to be wanting to go to hell in some ways with COVID-19 and so many other crazy things? I think, Rudy, for me, um, if I don't keep busy, then I will go mad or at least uh, become more mad than I already am. So uh, I have to be careful. I've just really tried to entertain myself and also just keep working at some of the goals that I have. And I'm lucky enough to be able to do that from the safety of my home. Um, So with this uh, new album in particular, uh, the lucky thing is that I have been working on it for over three years now with my writing partner, Gavin Bradley. And um, because I don't know that the end is near in terms of COVID yet, uh, we just decided to go ahead and release this passion project and get it out there and hopefully lift some spirits and and give people some new content and music to listen to while they're uh, in lockdown here in Toronto. Look, before we get into the new album and congratulations on that again, um, what did you, how did you deal with 2020 going into 2021, especially because of not just COVID-19, but, you know, Black Lives Matter. You saw what was going on in the U.S. with Donald Trump and Joe Biden and their, um, you know, election bid. And, you know, to me, thank God Biden won. But still, the uprising that happened on the Capitol, um, you know, the the fight of with people, masks, no masks. Um, uh, you know, the terms Karen and Kevin's are now something that is part of the fabric of life. What did you think of all that? And how did you handle it seeing all of this stuff literally happening in a span of one year? And also the, you know, the rise of, uh, of racism and white supremacy. So that's a lot, Rudy. I think um, it was overwhelming for everyone, but the most important thing for me um, personally, when um, approaching particularly the racism and the white supremacy, was sitting down and actually listening and understanding and educating myself and really becoming aware of the situation in a way that I feel ashamed I wasn't as aware of as I am now. Um, and beyond that, just I found it so difficult to not just want to crawl into a corner and cry, you know, because it was so intense with so many different things. And thank goodness we see somewhat of a light with not only Joe Biden, but more importantly, Kamala Harris um, in in leadership positions in the U.S. now. Um, Moving forward, being able to amplify Black voices and BIPOC voices in a way Um, in any way that I can is a priority for me as well. And I just think 2020 was, it's so hard to even wrap into words how much was learned, how horrifying uh, parts of our society are in terms of the mask, no mask, and just not being able to like listen to, you know, scientists. It was outstanding to even see witness you know like I, I'm sure you can agree I'm still grappling with it in terms of comprehending exactly how we got here you know mm. I agree with you I'm just curious though um you wear masks yes or no of course always okay so what is your favorite mask and why <laughs> this is gonna sound so narcissistic I have merch masks that to me um <laughs> with my face on them <laughs> it's so awful i can't believe i'm admitting this to you so i have those which when the album came out you may or may not have seen me walking around in them. but also my mom is darling and she 
stitch together all of these fabric masks that are three layers. Um, so I wear those um, also because I, I would feel so bad those disposable ones. Like I, over time, I just can't imagine how much garbage it's creating, you know? Yes. Yeah, because I, I remember when we were first into the pandemic in March and April, and the amount of not just masks but gloves just yeah. being thrown all over the place on the subways, on the streets. In the parking lots. Parking lots. It was lot. insane. It was crazy. You don't see as much now because I think more people are now wearing – the reusable mask, which, you know, thank goodness. But, yeah, in the beginning was just, just horrible. But I I got to get one of those. I got to get one of your face masks. I got to <laughs> get one of those. I, can I just say, too, I never understood the glove situation because it's like I, you're, if you touch your face with a pampered glove, it's going to do the same thing as your hand. Yeah. So yeah. why don't you just wash your hands regularly and don't touch yourself? Like, I never thought that. Thought that. I, I think a lot of people didn't understand that in the beginning because I know I was wearing a glove. I was wearing gloves in the beginning, and then it, what you just said connected. Going, wait a minute, it's still the same thing because I'm still, right. you know, I'm still trying to clean my. Hand. Wait a minute, no, oh, okay, let me just <laughs> let me just stop with the gloves. Let me just. But now for myself, and I'm just throwing this out there for everybody who's listening on Reedy Blair Entertainment Media, ReedyBlairMedia dot com. Uh, I'm now doing the double mask, so I have, a, yep. uh, you know, the. A mask uh, that I, I picked up uh, over at Canadian Tire, wear that all across my face, and then the designer mask, I put that over that. So there you it, go. Uh, yeah, it works. But look, let's get to the album and let's talk about that first. What's the name of the album, and what is the concept behind it, please? So the name of the album is Tove. Um, and it's actually named after a dear friend of mine who I lost to stomach cancer at the beginning of the pandemic. Um, and she uh, is one of my best friends. And um, I just thought for a debut album, what do I name it that I'm going to love 10 years from now? So I thought, well, the name Tove is going to be something I'm going to love forever. So it seems appropriate that that would be the name of the album. Um, and the album itself is broken into three different acts. So uh, the first act is Betrayal, and the second act is Heartbreak, and the third act is Survival. And uh, at the end of the album, there's actually a song that I wrote for Tova um, and her newborn daughter, um, and actually got a chance to, well, I wrote that song the night that we knew we were going to lose Tova, recorded it and sent it to her sister. And uh, her sister was able to play it for her in the hospital on her hospital bed. And um, at that time, Tova couldn't speak, but her sister told me that she smiled when she heard it. And I'm just so grateful that Tova was able to hear that. And uh, that version is actually available um, on the end of the album. Little one, she loves you. She's wanted you, she's wanted you for years Little one, I know you Will have her with you, have her through your fears And I'll help you to remember The things you never knew She lives on in all of us But it's better Now, is that the single that's out right now, or is there another single out right now? No, so the single out right now is called End of Me, and it features Michelle Mondesir, who is also a, also a Toronto artist, uh, a member of the band um, Madam Psychosis, and uh, it's a really dance floor banger of a track, and um, that's, that's uh, the single that we're promoting right now with the album itself. Are you healthy for me anyway? Now, because you said when this whole thing was coming about, writing it and everything, I'm curious, when did you record this? Because I know with Toronto, during the summer, things are starting to open up, and then by September, October, things shut down. How were you able to record this? How creative did you have to be to make this album happen? 
So luckily, a lot of the tracks were already recorded over the three years. Um, there were a few. Um, I, there's actually three that we had to record while the pandemic was happening. So um, there was a period in the summer where Gavin and I got together. I went to his studio. We had a shield up. We masked when I wasn't singing and completely tried to prevent any sort of risk as much as possible, including quarantining before seeing each other. And in, over the course of three days, I went in and recorded a stack of songs as well as some new material that will be coming out later this year and tried to jam everything I could into that period because um, we all knew that this would be, there would be a resurgence by the fall and there would be no way to get back into the studio for a period of time. And I really rely on Gavin for vocal production and um, I just find that he's one of the best in the industry. So I don't want to do anything but work with him, right? So I had to make those arrangements and really prepare to make sure that we could do it in the time slot that we set out. Now, one, I don't want to glance over this um, when you mentioned about Gavin because uh, folks need to realize he literally is one of the, if not the biggest producer coming out of Canada. Um, and he has worked with some major artists. Um, you name it, you check the yeah, credits, his name will be on that. Um, how the hell did you get him to uh, work with you during this uh, tough time? Um, so Gavin and I have worked since the beginning of my music career together, but actually it's uh, all spun from a recommendation that our friend Simone Denny from Love Inc. made to me to reach out to Gavin uh, when I first um, wanted to pursue making music and really seriously developing some of the things that I was writing. So Simone pointed me in the right direction, and then Gavin and I have now become really close friends and co-workers really that's amazing um curious any music videos with these songs so there are a couple that you can catch on youtube now from songs on the album um as soon as it's safe to make a music video for end of me michelle and i have talked about doing so uh at the t at the time it's just really impossible even with social yeah. distancing measures and you know if we were to do something outside it's far too cold um, and, you know, you want to do it right. You know, Rudy, you don't want to just like throw something out there. So when the time comes, hopefully we'll be able to do something. Amazing. Looking forward to that. Any, like I said, I know you've been doing a lot of guest uh, appearances, social media wise. Uh, will there be more of that? Will, be, will there be any uh, live stream performances going on, virtual performances? What's going on with that? Yeah, so actually a friend of mine and fellow musician, Keith Oaks in New York, New York City, um, were planning on doing a tour at the beginning of this year with a bunch of different LGBTQ plus musicians. Um, as you can gather, that didn't happen because of COVID-19. So uh, we looked for an alternate solution to spotlight fellow LGBTQ plus musicians as well as ourselves um, and came up with a concept of creating this show called Quarantine, which is essentially a TRL style show where we show music videos of our fellow LGBTQ plus artists and have different co-hosts on every week. And uh, that is actually airing every Sunday at three o'clock Eastern time on Twitch. And you can visit my Instagram, which is just Corey J. Stewart to uh, get the link for that. What advice can you give folks out there who are going through this tough time also? Um, because, you know, a lot of people really felt that once uh, 2020 ended, literally they were going three, two, one, happy new year. It's a new world. But as we oh, can gosh. see, what has been going on in 2020 is still resonating in 2021. Uh, mind you, we are still in the first month as we speak. What advice can you give folks that hopefully they can get through each month and get through this tough time and get through this tough winter that hopefully things will start opening up when well, warm weather happens, people can get their shots, we can settle down a bit and start working together instead of against each other? I think that it's really important to keep in mind that there is an end in sight for all of this. Uh, that was something that was particularly difficult to grasp in 2020, but I know now that we do have a vaccine, there is hope or a light at the end of this dark, musty tunnel that we're in. Um, so it's important to keep mind of that and know that the sacrifices we're making right now are 
allowing us the opportunities to regather again one day and hopefully no one will be missing because I know that I'm going to miss my friend Tove desperately. So I hear you, my friend. I hear you. Social media is the place to go. Where do we go to follow you? So just Corey J. Stewart on Instagram and Corey has no E. Fantastic. My brother, thank you so much. Big love to you. Crossing fingers that we can get together, man. We have not done a dinner or a drink or anything in way too long. It is one of the first things I want to do when we get out of this hell. <laughs> Fantastic. Again, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you. Thank you.